Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. While topics such as this usually warrant an inclusion into the category of dirty devs, when it is a publisher attempting to steal a game from the developers, it is one that warrants a different sort of list, such as corpo rats. And such is the case with Nacon and the long-standing pattern of bad faith actions taken against the developers of the sinking city, Frogwares. For a full visibility, I would like to take some time to discuss a bit of the unfortunate history of Frogwares and how they seem to have the absolute worst luck imaginable when it comes to publishers. As this is not the first time these developers have run into issues with this publisher and others, and then we'll discuss Nacon and their blatant theft of an entire video game. In September of 2019, Frogwares released a statement on their website discussing why several of their games were being removed from Steam as well as the Sony and Microsoft storefronts by Focus Home Interactive. The list of those games included Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment, The Testament of Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper, and Magrunner Dark Pulse. The reason for these games being removed from those storefronts was a baffling one. Frogwares had signed with Focus Home Interactive as the publisher. However, the publishing and distribution agreement had expired, and Focus Home Interactive had refused to transfer the title IDs to Frogwares, who retained ownership of their intellectual property. Per Frogwares, Focus Home Interactive had stated, Focus has put in place a policy in accordance with which they will not transfer any title, the content ID or title ID, belonging to any developer which has removed all of their games from the Focus catalog. Now, this was what Frogwares had stated as, quote, a policy that is not in any of our previous or existing contracts with Focus and that has never been applied to us in the past. As a result of Focus Home's decision, the games were delisted, and Frogwares had to do their best to rush and set up new storefronts on those three distributor platforms, causing a period of time where those games were not available for purchase through any legitimate means. To that end, Frogwares ended their statement with the following, We are in the process of setting up new store profiles, and we are contacting console stores and hope to try and rectify the situation. However, we are unable to confirm if this can be done and already know that it will be impossible for certain games on previous previous gen, and very costly for others as we will have to update the SDK and that takes months. We are certainly not going to give up and will pursue this issue through the appropriate channels. We have always been an independent studio. We worked with many licensees on the grounds of mutual interest and benefits, but it's the first time in 20 years we have encountered such a situation. We are losing all revenue attached to these games, for some for an unknown period of time and for other games forever. This new policy from Focus Home towards former contracted developers will land a serious blow to our studio, threatening our future games and the people who develop them. Now, Frogwares was able to get those games back up for sale on Steam, however, it would appear that only the most recent of the previously listed games, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, was put back on the Microsoft and Sony storefronts in January of 2020, a full four months after this incident had first started. A full 13 months after the incident with Focus Home Interactive occurred, Frogwares found themselves in troubled waters once again. However, this time it was with Big Ben Interactive and Nacon, the publishers for The Sinking City. In August of 2020, Frogwares released the statement titled, The Sinking City is being delisted, here's why. Within it, Frogwares had the following to say. Since the release of The Sinking City on June 27, 2019, we've been involved in legal battles with Big Ben Interactive slash Nacon over the title. In 2017, we signed The Sinking City contract as a licensing agreement with Big Ben slash Nacon two years after the start of production. In exchange for a financial contribution to the development, we gave them the right to sell and commercialize the game on four platforms, Xbox One, PS4, Steam, and later Epic Game Store. The intellectual property would still belong to Frogwares, which has always been the only producer and owner of its games, including The Sinking City. We signed the deal on those terms, and we would receive part payments for each production milestone completed, then a share of revenue starting at the first euro or dollar, so as well until the collaboration started. Within it, they outlined how Nacon slash Big Ben had never held up to their financial obligations as stipulated by the publishing contract. Per Frogwares, Big Ben Interactive and their subsidiary Nacon were on average a minimum of 40 days late with any payments owed to Frogwares. In addition, when the publishers had bought out a competing studio, they demanded that Frogwares churn over the source code for The Sinking City to them, which they had no right to do as Frogwares 
were and are the owners of the IP. Frogwares rightfully refused, and as a result, the publishers refused to provide payments for over four months. The publishers also refused to provide Frogwares with the business plan, any form of consistent sales forecasts, and from there, it just got worse. But per the statement, on June 27, 2019, The Sinking City was released on Xbox One, PS4, and Epic Game Store. That was a great day for us, and once the game was released, we received a letter from Big Ben slash Nacon that the milestones that were previously approved are being cancelled, meaning that we would not receive any profit from the sales of the game, a retroactive cancellation on not delivering a product on time that is already out in the markets is not acceptable. That was when our legal battles began. We filed a lawsuit against Big Ben slash Nacon on August 2019, and incidentally, only then we started to receive income reports, though incomplete and undocumented. So it was not possible for us to see if the revenue was correctly calculated, or even how many units were sold. At some point, we received a statement claiming that one of the console manufacturers hasn't paid royalties for more than five months, while actually the same console manufacturer paid our royalties from other games without any delay in the same time period. Furthermore, we were surprised to find that copyright notices on box covers and storefront pages were legally incorrect, creating a perception that it was not Frogwares which was the owner of the IP. To that end, Frogwares had discovered that their logo had been removed from the PS4 and Xbox One game covers and marketing materials, having it replaced by the Big Ben logo, creating a perception that Big Ben had developed the game and not Frogwares. Issues continue to mount, including Big Ben and Nacon attempting to release what Frogwares called a pirate version of the game on the game storefront Utomic. After 11 months of attempting to resolve these issues, Frogwares decided to execute the termination clause within the contract, an action that Big Ben and Nacon fought, attempting to claim that the contract could not be terminated due to the France emergency laws concerning the COUF pandemic, while at the same time still refusing to fulfill their own contractual obligations. Frogwares continued by stating, As a result, two more reasons for the contract termination emerged. We have completely stopped receiving the royalties that are still being collected on our behalf and owed to us, now amounting to roughly 1 million euros. The emergency laws explanation actually triggers the force majeure article of our own contract, entitling us to terminate the agreement in case the parties could not minimize the effects of an event of force majeure on this agreement for a period of 60 days. The agreement is therefore terminated without further formality. Moreover, on July 17, 2020, Nacon attempted to oppose the termination in court, but the judge rejected the demand and the contract is now terminated in the eyes of the law. As a result of Big Ben Interactive and Nacon still attempting to earn income from the game, Frogwares was forced to request the game be delisted from all storefronts. However, the game has been relisted under Frogwares' control on Origin, Games Planet, and the Nintendo storefront. Which brings us to the latest news, Nacon's blatant theft of a game. The theft is never a good thing, but to see such a blatant and public act such as this is incomprehensible in nature and it honestly makes me wonder how Nacon thought they would be able to get away with it. On March 1st, Frogwares released their statement, How Nacon Cracked and Pirated the Sinking City, along with an accompanying YouTube video that I will link in the pinned comment down below. And I'd like to read a bit from the statement where they say, since the release of The Sinking City was released on the 27th of June 2019, Frogwares has encountered continual problems with its licensee, Nacon. This post slash video will look into a particular aspect of the game's contract and the findings that we, Frogwares, have made. Steam is one of the listed platforms of commercialization in the contract between Frogwares and Nacon, but since the release of the game, Nacon's unlawful actions have forced Frogwares to defend its property and react in front of the French justice for lack of payments, attempts to steal our IPs, etc., which we made a public letter about back in August of 2020. Since then, Nacon has tried to force Frogwares to deliver a new master version of the game through the use of their lawyers. The French justice refused Nacon's demands twice, first in July 2020 and then in October 2020 during an appeal. The final decision on whether Frogwares is obligated to deliver the Steam version that Nacon is demanding is still set to be judged in trial court in the next months or even years. So on February 26, 2021, to our great surprise, we found a new version of The Sinking City was uploaded to Steam and launched, but 
but Frogwares didn't deliver such a version. And this is not the first time something like this has happened. Elaine Falk, Nacon owner and CEO, warned us on December 28, 2020 in writing that, "...you have 48 hours to upload a new Steam Master, otherwise we will use all solutions available within the law and the contract." 48 hours later, Nacon purchased a version of the Sinking City through the site GamesPlanet and uploaded it to Steam like it is a Steam version. So immediately after his ultimatum expired, Nacon broke the law and breached the contract. We informed Steam of this and have prevented the game from being released because it was obvious that it was a stolen version of the game. So today we discovered yet another unknown version of our game, and what we found is that Nacon is a publicly listed company in Paris, valued at around 700 million euros, is yet again behind it. This is now Nacon's third public attempt to publish a pirated PC version of our game, with a previous attempt being made via Utomic in February 2020 and the attempted upload in December 2020. Apparently, in order to do this, Nacon had either illicitly obtained or cracked the encryption key for the Unreal Engine encryption system for the game, allowing them to decompile the game and make branding and logo changes to remove the original Games Planet logo, where the game files were obtained by Nacon and updated it with their own logo. Frogwares downloaded the Steam version of the game that Nacon had posted for sale and used their own encryption key to decrypt the archive, meaning that Nacon were so lazy about it they didn't even bother to compile the game using a different encryption key. And Frogwares shows within the config file the origin of the game content, which was Games Planet. Also within Frogwares' YouTube video, they show how some features within the Games Planet version of the game were removed, such as the Games Planet logo, along with the loading screen graphic where the Games Planet logo was removed once again, and then within the main menu where the advertisement for Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 was removed, as well as the Play More menu option and the Games Planet platform watermark. Now, in addition to that, the version that Nacon had attempted to sell was the deluxe version of The Sinking City, which was developed after the original release and contained within it content that Nacon did not pay for, and as such, that content exists outside of the original publishing contract. And of course, Nacon apparently requested keys from Steam to commercialize the game on other unauthorized platforms, because why wouldn't they? But as Frogwares have been doing their due diligence, they managed to identify specifically who within the company had done all this. The Steam account Neopica underscore FH showed the name Philip Hotakeet, which when they googled the name, it returned the LinkedIn profile for the founder and managing director of the developer studio Neopica, who have published the following games on Steam. Hunting Simulator, Hunting Simulator 2, Hunting Simulator 2 Bear Hunter Edition, My Vet Practice, and My Vet Practice Marine Patrol. And apparently this company has spammed out a total of 60 games on various platforms. It is also worth noting that Nacon acquired Neopica in October of last year. As a result of these actions, Frogwares had the following to say. There are long-term damages that we need to take care of. Nacon unpacked our data, stole our source code, and used it. Nacon can create a new version of The Sinking City using our assets. They can resell, reuse, and recycle our content and our tools, etc. We have to take the measure of what happened now and follow the best path on the legal side to prevent anything like this happening again. The owner of Nacon, Elaine Falk, will have to face the legal consequences of the decision of pirating and stealing Frogware's property. Incidentally, intellectual property laws in France are rather serious and can lead to up to 7 years in jail and 750,000 euros of fines plus damages as the Article 335-4 from Intellectual Property Code points out. Now, I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever seen a contract dispute between developers and their publishers ever take such a drastic turn as we've seen here today. Nacon outright stole the Sinking City and Frogwares caught them with both their pants down and their hands in the cookie jar. To steal in such a blatant and transparent a manner as this is absolutely baffling to me, especially considering this is the third time they've attempted to do this. I can't even begin to believe that Nacon would ever think they were within their legal rights to do this, especially considering their own consistent pattern of contract violations. Within that statement, Frogwares had also made it clear that Nacon was attempting to force them to deliver to them a new master version of the game, where the French justice system refused those demands twice. The first refusal was in July of 2020, which Nacon then lost their appeal in October as well. Apparently, there is a final judgment on whether Frogwares is obligated to deliver a Steam version with Nacon as the publisher still pending. So, Nacon took it upon themselves to ignore the current legal battle and release it all on their own in a blatant disregard for the law. 
Now, make no mistake, this is theft, and I sincerely hope that Nacon is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And also, while I can't nor wouldn't speak for anyone else, I will always remember to check who the publisher is on a game before I buy it, and if I see the words Nacon or Big Ben Interactive, you can be absolutely certain that I will not be clicking that buy button. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.